Wow, I sure did stir up some controversy shitting on Crunchyroll, didn't I? But as this tide of carnage floods the Anitubes and any Twitters, I have to ask myself, why do I care so much? Why do any of us care so much? I mean, yeah, corporations should be taken to task over their wrongdoings as often as possible, but I've got a far greater litany of complaints with Google and YouTube and their practices than I do Crunchyroll. Yet, I'm still using Chrome, Drive, and, well, you're watching this video on YouTube, I imagine. In fairness to myself, it's a lot harder to migrate from these platforms than it is to cancel my Crunchy subscription and continue my usual practice of just typing watch name of show into the search bar and clicking the first link that comes up. And since I'm an anime channel, it makes more sense for me to complain about anime streaming services than to moralize about the conflict minerals used in my piece of shit Google Pixel phone. But there's more to it than just convenience. It also has to do with what anime represents in my life and what I think a lot of people who engage with it, especially on the internet, want from it. Back in 2007, returning to the anime community after having taken a break from the medium for a few years due to not having cable or enough money to afford DVDs quite literally pulled me out of the worst depression of my life. From ages 14 through 15 and a half, I was completely fucking miserable at all times. I had no friends whatsoever, had my heart broken by what in retrospect was most likely an internet catfisher, and was stuck on a dial-up connection. My family was broke, I didn't know how to communicate with them because I was going through puberty and a gender identity crisis and there was no way any of them was prepared to deal with that, and there was nothing I wanted more than to just run away and go live in the forest. And then I discovered fan subs. Back then, copyright police weren't nearly as strident, and even even if you didn't know how to torrent, you could find Haruhi on YouTube, Utena on Vio, and oh yeah, hundreds and hundreds of illegally uploaded anime on an infamous premium piracy platform called Crunchyroll. Back then, you could only watch their stuff in a tiny little 360p window which couldn't be full screened unless you had a paid account, which I did not, but I still used the site to watch Simone and Welcome to the NHK, which both became favorites, which I wrote about on my anime blog, discussed in the Mega Tokyo forums, and found context to understand myself better through. Hell, one of my best friends in high school was a hardcore otaku hikikomori whom I barely managed to get the contact info off of before he disappeared from school entirely, and I only talked to him because he brought a Lucky Star fan book to lunch one day. Who wants to take a guess what streaming service I used to watch Lucky Star in 2007? When Crunchyroll went legit, I was excited for it, because even though they had to scrub what at the time had been the largest library of ultra-obscure anime streams off the internet, it seemed like they were dedicated to getting it back and picking up the rights to tons of obscure shit. But it was right around the time that I wandered through the living room while my parents were watching TV and caught wind of an Anamanaguchi song coming through the speakers, piking my interest to witness a televised Crunchyroll commercial that I wondered aloud, what the fuck, why? Now look, as a niche creator who spent the last six years extensively studying the marketing of niche media, I know the importance of casting a wide net. If you're making a piece of art which only a thousand people in America are going to care about, you're not going to find those people by sharing your work with just the thousand people who happen to be closest nearby. Most likely, you'll have to reach at least a few million people, and even then, it can't be a random selection of Americans. You've got to figure out where the people tangentially interested in your work are corralled, and then reel in whichever members of that crowd will be attracted to you specifically. But you also have to consider that once you have those precious people you want, none of them are going to want to continue having to participate in the broader world outside which their lack of interest in drove them away from to you in the first place. The reason I spent the last year going down the road of increasingly niche creations is that enough of my actual patrons were expressing complete disinterest in the work which I created to reach as many people as possible, and an increased interest in my more personal, heartfelt output, so it just made sense to make that change, and it still would have if I didn't put myself in a position where I needed to draw in an even bigger group of people to make ends meet, but that's a story for another time. Crunchyroll is an excellent starting point as an anime fan. It's a wide blanket cast over as many people as possible to enroll them into the surface level of the community, and because it does host a fair deal of obscure shit, it can help people to start their tunneling down. However, once you've gotten to that depth, it leaves you with little left to engage with. You won't find a lot of hardcore anime fans who even give a shit about Crunchyroll, nor Anitube for that matter, and that's because those people have dug further underground into a proper otaku culture oasis, and this ain't that. 
Back in the 90s and early 2000s, the internet was, in itself, an oasis from the real world. You'll often hear nerds who grew up there crying and waxing nostalgic about a time when the internet was the so-called Wild West. But the only reason it was like that is because no one was there. As soon as the internet had greater application in people's lives and social media became a corral for the thoughts and opinions of literally everyone on Earth, a new kind of social order which appealed to the most broad and basic needs of as many people as possible was inevitable. Every day on social media, a constant war is being waged between ideological factions who have chosen to build their houses in the same neighborhoods on the social media surface web, when the entire purpose of neighborhoods, the purpose of independent websites, communities, and these days discord groups, was to group people with smaller needs and interests together so that they could work together towards their personal goals. The concept of a filter bubble is often looked down upon, but filter bubbles are the most natural thing in the world. It is straight up psychologically irresponsible to be constantly concerning yourself with the needs and habits of every community on Earth outside of how they relate to your own in an actionable way. Yes, we should have an understanding of and acceptance of one another, but this doesn't mean we all need to be living in the same place with the same rules and fighting over where the lines need to be drawn 24-7. If you think social media is a cancerous blight on the world, then get away from it. Young people have figured out pretty effectively over the last few years that Discord communities can offer them a greater sense of community than associating themselves with some named Twitter club. But for some reason, everyone still feels this need to return to the surface web and pitch their public fits over current events against diametrically opposed ideologies which they only really even need to interact with if it's going to have an effect on legal policy for themselves. Consider the following. Yes, it's probably a good idea for anime studios to put their shows on television and streaming services in order to reach as many people as possible and net all of the potential hardcore audience who will really appreciate their shit. But where does that audience go from there? How do they continue their engagement? Unless your show is big enough to pay for itself just by existing, your fans need somewhere to go. And what's more, they are ready and willing to engage with you. They want to be a part of something. Anime fans will build forums, conventions, communities, all around the unique shared perspective and passion which gives them a feeling of kinship with one another. If you give them something actionable towards finding a place for themselves, they will take that action. When I'm frustrated with Crunchyroll, I'm really frustrated with the anime community and the anime industry for leaning on them and other broad-reaching companies so hard over the last decade instead of making a world for themselves. Why aren't studios finding better ways to work with their fan bases towards getting the best product through the best funding paradigm? Why aren't fans making the type of communities they want to live in instead of squabbling around on the surface web? Well, the answer is simply that things are changing too fast, and there aren't enough proven avenues. We all know what YouTube success looks like. Just make a stupid clickbait title and thumbnail and load your shit with ad breaks and you're good to go. The production committee system is the demon the anime industry knows, and Crunchyroll has let themselves be subsumed into it because they want to grow and expand, and fighting the industry's conservative mentality is too long and too uphill a battle for them to fight. For all the shit I give Miles, I know that he wants things to be different, and there's just nothing he can do in that position. But we are unbeholden to these companies and their outdated ideas, and we have the power to make demands. We have the power to build something that works, to show it to the rest of the world, and let those who fear change slowly filter in behind us. And I think that those of us who want to inspire this are the ones who view the surface web as what it should be viewed as. Nothing more than a battleground. This is where you come up to rally your troops, to let the world know where you want the ship to be steered, and then take your people and fuck off underground to the oasis of your soul. Over the course of September, I'm going to be developing my Patreon community into its own cultural oasis, an underground city built by diglets. If you want to be a diglet, get in while the getting is good, and look forward to the last four days of daily Digibro vids.